announce the booty thereof as gifts of God. And this is, this is so false. I mean, if people are writing this, they should at least have some modicum of understanding or some moral stability to not write, write yeah. such untruths. I mean, for example, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to say to find a secular history, why do you have to do that? We would like to actually see what the, what the Christian scholars are saying about Jesus, peace be upon him. So you go to the horse's mouth to see what they're really saying and to decipher what, what they have. Not something else other than that. He said, which strips away the, the pleasantries. Why would the, of course, some of the, some of the Orientalists, they would have written very bad words about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But there were also others who, who bowed their head and say, wow, this is a man. This is a leader. This is, this is the best in the world. And they were all non-Muslims. And we can give many examples of that, but we're not here to do that. And he said that advocated enabled rape. I mean, this is the farthest from, from a man who was chased in a society that was unchaste. Mm -hmm. I mean, even before revelation, he was chased. He was called an Amin, who was a trustworthy, a the, Sadiq, the, the truthful. The, the, the Jewish people yes. used to bring their, their goods and yes. money. To, if they had to leave, yes. the and Jewish people would give them their money to hold. Not to just save the Jews. Jews. The, 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 the pagans would also give him, give him the... Give, give them their personal possessions and leave. And actually, it is recorded in history by the Muslims and the non-Muslims that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he made the migration from Mecca to Medina, he actually left the, some of the belongings that he did not return back to the, to the, to the people that had loaned it to him, the non-Muslims. He left it with Ali, his cousin, to actually give it back. So Ali actually stayed back a few days in order to give it back uh, to the people that were owed. I mean, this is the highest of highest of moral character who actually escapes with their life and, and, and then says, well, make sure you give it back to the same people who are killing. This is why when he went back into Mecca, he went back with his head bowed and he, and he entered Mecca without bloodshed. Without bloodshed. Why? Because he, he won their hearts. He did not actually conquer walls and bomb them and, and, and do things that were injurious. And even from a, from a purely mm. uh, psychological perspective, if you rule mm. with an iron fist, yes. you may get people to follow you for a yeah. brief, brief time period. Exactly. Right? But if you leave, they're going to fall astray, right? They right. want to stay. They'll, yeah. And they'll look for any avenue to yeah. get away from that. And, but the, mm -hmm. Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad yeah. peace be upon him, right. he has the love, the love over yeah. a thousand years yes. of a devotion of a followers right. that love him yeah. for his message. And how can that be that millions and millions of people love the message of Allah, peace be upon him, a person that he's calling on paranoid uh, suspicions. You can imagine that killing arbitrary. I mean, this is something that, that is unheard of. This is, this is something that's totally false. The reason why we're dealing with it is because some of these ignoramuses that are out there, they make these statements in order to think that, oh, they're going to mislead somebody. It is by Allah's guidance that people will be guided. It is by Allah's guidance that will is guided. It is by Allah's guidance that I'm guided. It is by Allah's will that, that we are all guided to a certain direction. So it is not, not on any human being to actually make that uh, audacious statement to say that, that the Messenger of Allah had paranoid suspicions and stole from the surrounding if, tribe. If you had, and Prophet Muhammad had access, if he wanted to, 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 to any number of monetary funds, if he wanted to, right? right. He was the leader of, of the Muslims at the time. Right. He, he, uh, he had their devotion. Uh, they would have given how, him how, everything. They would have given him everything. How, how did he live? I mean, they would have, was his lifestyle like? Yeah, what they would have given him everything. I mean, before, they were, the Meccans were ready to give him all the gold, all the silver, all the women, every single thing if that he, he wanted. If he, if he would just deny the message. If he just denied saying, La ilaha illallah, that God is one. Yeah. He, and if he would have followed their idols, they were willing to give him every single thing because they did not want any disruption in their commerce, you see. Yeah. So, why this person stood there and slept on a mat, and ate uh, very simple food and gave all his wealth out to the poor and the needy, took care of the widows. That's why his first wife, Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her, she was twice, twice widowed and he married her. And she was older than him by 15 years. And he stayed with her in a monogamous relationship for 26 years. For 26 years. Even after she died, he used to send food and, and presents to her to her relatives. I and mean, this is the beauty of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, the, uh, the greatest of human beings that have lived. And this person comes out and says, four of the five pillars of Islam are pagan polytheistic rituals, 
which were practiced in Mecca hundreds of years before Muhammad, peace be upon him. I want to know which, which pillar. The first pillar is the Shahada. You say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. What is, I want to ask this question. What is paganistic about this and polytheistic about this pillar? It's monotheistic, it's monotheistic. in a pure sense. Yes. Yeah. In fact, they, they, uh, Muhammad, before, yeah. uh, you know, he, he, was, he, he got, a, got them to do away with worshipping over 300 right. gods right. at the time. And the second pillar of Islam is a salah, the, the prayer itself. Tell me the prayer <laughs> bowing down to the one God. And Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane in the Bible, he fell on his forehead and prayed, Oh Father, take this cup away from me. Obviously, he was praying to his God, right? Yeah. So the, the prayer itself that Allah says to establish the prayer, tell me what is, my, what is polytheistic about the prayer and what is paganistic about the prayer itself again, and not to even pray in front of an idol. Again, it's, again it's a reaffirmation of, of the monotheistic view of Islam. Yep. La ilaha illallah, ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah. And again we say la ilaha illallah, God is one. God is one uh, and also Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad is a messenger of God. So we distinctly put that in the prayer in the sense, or Allah mm -hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala put that in the prayer. We differentiate between Allah, mm -hmm. Allah is the one worthy of worship, and Muhammad, the Rasulullah, he is a messenger of God. So we don't say Allah is the God, Muhammad is a God. Mm -hmm. We say Allah is a God, Muhammad is a messenger. Allah. And in the belief of Muhammad being the messenger, we believe in all the other messengers too. Right. So we put that firmly in place. Okay. Very, so clear, very clear. Those are two. Those are two points. I mean, they're not paganistic. <laughs> and they're definitely not polytheistic. And it shows we do not yeah. work, uh, we do not uh, bow down to Muhammad either. Exactly. In the prayer, we we yes. differentiate that. So now we have the third pillar. What is the third pillar? The zakat. The zakat means in in the real word in in Arabi zakat and tamarbuta. It's it, these are the three letters. Although for this this writer it might seem so boggling to his mind and befuddling him that he cannot take three letters of a different language but it's only three letters it means actually purity to to cleanse oneself to to cleanse and 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 from the same root word you get the word to thrive to increase and to and to endeavor in in god's path so you are literally cleansing yourself by paying the zakat which is the the, uh, the poor do that is given on top of the extra wealth that is sitting with you that you are not using yourself. Because where does your wealth come from? Exactly. Our belief is the wealth comes from Allah subhanahu yeah. God. God yeah. provides us. Yes. So we have to reflect that and provide for somebody else. And this is two and a half percent on top of the Nisab zakah which is around in North America is 1900 Canadian dollars. If you have more than that sitting for one year, you should actually pray two and a half percent of what Allah has given more than that. You don't pay it on your house, your, your, your car, something that you're using. But if you have an extra house, if you have extra money sitting in the bank, rather than making a sit to be thankful, to cleanse your money also, to give the poor do who are unfortunate. So for you to be given a hundred percent, Allah is only asking two and a half percent after your needs are fulfilled so for I mean, $10,000 so yeah. it would be $250 on $10,000 yeah. but then you take yeah. out the 1900 from that right, so it would right. be even less than yeah. than than $250 yeah. i mean to say that this is paganistic and polyistic is not so and, it's all, and it also is realistic yeah it's a realistic Way yeah, of life. It's pragmatic. It's, so not, putting you in a, it's yeah. not putting you in a position of stress to try, exactly. to try to live up to your religious obligations. Right. right. And nobody's going to actually knock down your door and say, well, we're here to collect the zakah. It is from you to purify because Allah says that. that he